Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ron, and as always, it's great to have you. Thank you for stopping by. To start, you obviously clicked on this video because you're curious why I'm not interested in buying the newest DJI FPV Quad. So I'm gonna cut right to the chase and let's jump right into it. First, I'll start by saying that this drone isn't for everyone, no surprise. And if you're already flying FPV Quads, then I see no reason for you to pay over $1,000 to fly this particular quad. It just doesn't offer anything new that you can't already get from what's already out there in a traditional photography drone or a traditional FPV quad. Yes, it's a cross breed between the two, but that's really about it. So if you're a YouTuber and you need to make review videos or new product reviews, then yes, maybe that's a reason to buy this particular drone but that would be the exception and not necessarily the rule. Even if you're not already flying FPV, I just don't think that this is the best option to buy as your first FPV. So there are just better alternatives out there right now, and my recommendation would be to start with a smaller FPV, like a two and a half inch Beta 95X, or even an Emax Tiny Hawk, just to get you started in FPV and familiarize yourself with how FPV quads actually fly. So you're absolutely gonna crash your first FPV drone. There's just no way around that. Even if you're practicing in a flight simulator, nearly everyone who flies FPV is going to take more risks with an FPV quad than they would with a traditional camera type quad. They just go hand in hand with flying FPV drones. It's just the way it goes. And additionally, repairing this drone by yourself just isn't gonna be an option at this time, at least not for 99% of the flyers out there. Now, I've heard someone say, probably at best, if you're crashing traditional GPS drones, you're probably doing something wrong. But if you're crashing FPV quads, you're actually doing something right. I think that says it best. So you're simply gonna need DJI to repair this DJI FPV drone for you. And you're gonna need DJI's replacement parts, which actually aren't even available, or the majority of the parts aren't even available right now. So you'll find a few parts on the DJI website, but not enough spare parts for things like your motors or ESCs, or even a replacement camera part. Uh, they, they're just not available on the DJI website. And the frame design to me um, doesn't make replacing parts easy either. I think DJI has tried to do too much with this drone. It's kind of a jack of all trades, but a master of none. So what I mean by this is the DJI FPV drone does a little of everything. It has a mode to fly like a traditional GPS quad. It can do video and photography, and it can also fly like an FPV, but it isn't the best at any one thing in particular. Now, I've seen a ton of videos already where the DJI FPV drone has crashed and unflyable almost immediately. From what I can tell, DJI sent a lot of social media influencers, at least two of the DJI FPVs with the expectation that they'll be crashing or damaging at least one of them. At least that's my perception. And let's be honest, many of uh, these influencers probably crashed this drone because they've never flown FPV quads before. Now, unlike most of these influencers, you're not gonna have the luxury of a backup DJI FPV quad laying around while your other FPV quad is being repaired by DJI. Now, I don't know what the turnaround time for shipping to and from China is, but I expect that it's not that quick. Another reason I'm not a fan of this drone is it's built in geofencing. Geofencing is just not something that I want in a traditional type FPV quad, at least not for me. Additionally, the new DJI FPV drone won't work with my existing DJI FPV remote controller, something like this one here, meaning I'm gonna have to purchase a new controller to fly this quad, and for me, I'm just not interested in more gear to fly my quads. I feel like DJI should have made this existing controller compatible with the newest DJI FPV as well. Now, most FPV pilots have a single remote controller that they like to get familiar with and fly with um, to make things simple, and if you wanna get the most out of your FPV quads, then you wanna know exactly where all your buttons and switches are, and for me, switching between different controllers just 
just isn't gonna help me be a better FPV pilot. So again, I want a single controller for all my FPV quads. It took me a while to intuitively know where all my switches were, my arming switch, my turtle mode switch, a fail safe switch, and so on. And remember, when you have your DJI FPV goggles on or whatever goggles you're wearing, you're not gonna be able to look down at your remote controller. So you'll have to know exactly where everything is intuitively and without thinking about it twice in order to prevent a crash. So to me, things just get way too complicated when you're switching between different remote controllers. Not something that I want. Simply put, I already have this particular DJI FPV remote controller, so why should I need another one? Now, one of the biggest issues that I have is the actual true cost of ownership for this particular newest quad that DJI is, DJI is releasing. Believe it or not, the actual price of ownership is actually gonna be closer to $2,000. Now, hear me out. You have the current list price for this drone around 1299 US dollars and that's for the DJI FPV combo. But to truly take advantage of all that this drone has to offer, I would also need to purchase at least one micro SD card, which on DJI's website currently lists for about $30, but I also found it as low as $19.99 on other sites. We're talking about 128 meg megabit micro SD card plus the Fly More Combo Kit, which contains two additional FPV Intelligent Flight Batteries and the DJI FPV Battery Charging Hub, which currently sells for an additional 299 US dollars. Now I know I'm gonna crash and break the new quad, so we're gonna need Additionally, the DJI Care Refresh plan, and we'll do the cheaper of the two options. So let's say I do the one year plan at $199. So add that up, and you're closer to $2,000 for a brand new DJI FPV quad. The actual price would be $1,827 US dollars. And that's without the DJI motion controller or the more expensive three year DJI Care Refresh plan. Personally, I also think that the new DJI motion controller is a bit gimmicky and I wouldn't use it, but perhaps some of you might like this product and wanna purchase it. Now, even with the DJI Care Refresh plan, just remember that flyaway scenarios are also not covered. The DJI Care Refresh plan only covers two types of drones in a flyaway scenario. It covers the DJI Mini 2 and the DJI Mavic Air 2, and that's it. Flyaways are not covered for any other drone offered by DJI at this time. This is one of those scenarios where I say buyer beware. There's a lot of fine print in those DJI Care Refresh plans, so make sure that you're reading all of it so you know what you're actually covered for and it's not all exactly spelled out, even in their fine print. In the fine print, DJI states that for a small additional charge, you can have your damaged product replaced um, if an accident occurs, but they never actually spell out what that additional charge fee will be. So doing a little digging around on the internet, it appears that that small fee will be around $250 for a replacement drone. So your replacement costs are actually closer to $458, $199 for the Care Refresh plan, plus another $259 for a replacement drone. Also, I stumbled across the DJI Repair Component Price Inquiry page, and I'm gonna leave a link to that below if you wanna check it out. But the new DJI FPV repair prices aren't spelled out as of this video upload. Again, we're currently hearing $259 for a replacement drone if you purchase the Care Refresh plan, but these fees are not posted anywhere by DJI, leaving customers blind to what they're actually getting when they purchase these plans. And finally, I'm just not a fan of the overall aesthetics or the form factor of this quad. It actually seems to me a bit bulky for an FPV. I know it's a hybrid, but still, I just think it's a bit blocky for what I like to fly. So those are my primary reasons for not buying this quad. I know a lot of you won't agree with me who knows maybe a few of you actually will in short i think we're gonna have a lot of unhappy dji pilots in the next few months mark my words we're gonna see a lot of video crash compilations over the next few months and a lot of very unhappy people who have nearly have spent nearly two thousand dollars on a drone that they've barely flown before destroying in short let me know what you agree with or don't agree with and if you bought this quad i do wish you a lot of luck but i think most of you are going to be disappointed with the purchase 
purchase in the not too distant future. I don't mean to sound negative, it's just my honest opinion of the newest product from DJI. Who knows, maybe they'll come out with a version two of this product and I'll have more confidence in that. But for now, it's just not for me. So I hope you appreciate my honesty here. Like anyone on YouTube, I would love for DJI to send me free drones and do product reviews to help grow my channel. Nothing grows a channel faster than be able to do reviews and new products. But when it comes to this particular channel, I always give you my honest opinion of a product, whether it's good or bad, even if it means I'm on DJI's naughty list for the year. And do me a favor before you go, please be sure to give this video a like. It's always appreciated. So until next time, be safe, happy flying, and we'll see you guys in the next video.